Hey guys, I'm back. This is going to be a quick stream. I have one challenge. <laughs> someone, someone just messaged me, uh, can I play you? And I said, challenge me, and he challenged me. So I'll play this guy, Kapuris. Uh, good luck, have fun, and let's play E4. Let's be aggressive this game. Now he said, are you going to stream? Uh, hopefully the stream is live. Nathan is here. That's a good sign. Play bishop b5. And take the knight. The rule is if they don't play knight d4, you just take the knight. And then... I'll play this like a grand prix. h5. He plays this so quickly. It's like it's preparation. Let's just play d3. Let's be solid. Uh, people can t can challenge me to any time control. I'm not going to be picky. I'm just going to follow the fate of uh, of Siri. So, I mean, Blitz is nice. People challenge me to Blitz, I'll be able to play more games. But whatever people want, play Queen E1. This bishop on D7 has no future. Or does it? Does he want to play this? Bishop will still have no future. Mubot! Explaining what's going on! Thanks to Nathan. Thanks for the host, Nathan. Um, Knight a4 is very thematic. Let's just play it. And then c4 is very thematic. This position is filled with thematic ideas. b3 is thematic to defend the knight and prepare c4. If c4 happens, this is positional heaven for white. Because black's pieces are just so sad. I think black should have played c4. But yeah, the position would still be difficult. Um, now I'm drawn to like this move or this move, because he can't really defend the pawn. He's also just blundered a queen. Which is a nice gift. Tough game. Um, that's the magic of the Grand Prix attack. As black, I, I recommend playing knight d4 here. It's a more challenging move. Uh, thank you. Rave, thanks for the, the follow. Uh, hello to more people. Hello, how's the horsey move? And hello, Camel Clutcher. I haven't seen Camel Cl Clutcher around in a while. Um, I have one pending challenge. I'll just continue to accept the only challenge. Playing a patron. Li little Annie Adderall. Luck. Have fun. Let's play, let's play d5. There's an opening that I've been wanting to play for a while. Um, let's play knight f6 first. And then we'll play a semi-slav. Bishop f4. I wanted to play a Cambridge spring, so you can't play the Cambridge springs against bishop f4. Only against bishop g5. Usually bishop f4 is, um, is a mistake because the bishop gets hit in many lines with knight d5. Hello, Peter Svidler. I don't think that's a real Peter Svidler, but hello. Um, okay, so... Knight d5 is one option. b5 is one option. Knight d5 looks so attractive. I wasn't going to play a London this game. Though maybe he was signaling. No, he was He was not signaling that he was going to play the London. I'm going to play b5. All of these moves are very thematic moves. If I upload this to YouTube, I might just <laughs> use some version of thematic in the title, I'm playing thematic chess or something. Uh, I could take the bishop. Yeah, let's get the bishop pair, and I'll put the bishop on b7, and I'll play a6. And I'll have a pawn chain, and I'll have two bishops. And I have an extra pawn. Life is so good right now. Peter Svidler, you saw me at K6 Nationals. 
Um, I'm going to see the real Peters Fiddler in, uh, in just a few days. He's coming to St. Louis to do Russian commentary. It's going to be very exciting. Thanks for the, the comment. Samsonite, 220. And Ulrichab, hello. Hamza Amkal, hello. Okay, knight e5. It's a move. Let's play knight d7. I would be happy with trades. <laughs> trades are about to happen. But if I take the knight, he takes my bishop and then he attacks my rook. So I guess we'll trade bishops. Improve my knight. I think the plan is to put the queen on d6, put the rook on d8. Because this is an isolated pawn, except, I mean, I guess I could trade more. Queen d5, let's just trade everything. If the e-file opens, like he takes on d5, then his rook wouldn't be able to access e1. Okay, I'll play rook d8. And I think my bishop belongs on f6 to target the pawn. He has a bunch of weak pawns. I don't have any weak pawns. My pawns are so solid. This is 3 plus 2. It is rated. Take this slightly seriously. Hey, Z Nation Chess! My first and one of my most loyal subscribers. 10 months in a row. Wow, it's about to be like a year anniversary since I started streaming consistently. I think once we hit October, it'll be some kind of one year anniversary. But it's not like an official one year anniversary because my first ever stream was maybe two years, three years ago, where I was just kind of playing around. But last October, I started streaming. And Z Nation Chess, the first subscriber. Happy birthday, Z Nation Chess. Is that actually your birthday? Oh, because you're on Eastern time. Is this another free pawn? I think my opponent just gave me a free pawn for Z Nation Chess's birthday. That's nice. Oh, it's not a free pawn because he's winning the bishop. But we're trading more. I can't complain with that. Okay, now I have to demonstrate some kind of endgame technique. If I play rook d8, he plays this, and then this is weak. Maybe I do this. Defend. Yeah, let's play rook d8. Rook d8. We'll do some kind of pawn move. I'll play queen d6. Could even consider rook d6 in some cases. Because if I play queen d6, he plays this. He's going to win the pawn. I could play queen a8. It's a clever move. Let's play rook d6. Everything's defended in this position. Literally everything. This defends this, defends this, defends this. This is undefended. So is this. Okay, so he really wants to win the pawn. Considering just going for the kill, but that would blunder queen b8. So let's just be safe. Defending the A-pawn another time. And very soon I, I would like to create a pass pawn on the queen side. And somehow achieve back rank mate. Or just, uh, or just flag my opponent. Okay, so rook e1. I don't think there's a threat. 
But b4 plunders queen b8. So let's play rook e6. Moves back. Let's play king h7. I blundered a pawn. Oops. It's only the first, or no, it's the second game. But well, that was an unacceptable blunder. Okay, well, I'm making life more challenging for myself. <laughs> I'm going to threaten some cheapo. Please don't see it. I saw it. Well, he's not threatening to take. So I can do this. If rook take a6, I made in one. Meanwhile, I just want to push. And flag. Or checkmate. Okay. <laughs> Not the best technique. Good game. Little Annie. Uh, saying ga. <laughs> uh, GG. Yeah, him or her. Um, anyway, uh, hello to more people. Hello, Morrison Seed. Hello, Jimmy Ackerman. My rook did have a smile on the open file. Okay. Oh, I was playing RR, Ave, Rave, whatever your name is. Good game. Now I have nine pending challenges. Now I have to use Siri. Give me a random number between 1 and 11. It's 5. Okay. This time I'll count in Russian. Adin, dva, tri, shatiri. I forget 5. Is it piat? Piat. How do you say 5 in Russian? I can't translate into Russian uh. yet, but I can translate into Spanish, Mandarin Chinese. French and a few others. How do you say five in Mandarin Chinese? Hmm. What? Okay. <laughs> um, let's play a London. I know very little Russian. I know basic chess words. And... I mean, I know more than Siri, so that's something. Knight c6. I'm trying to remember. There's some move order tricks, I think. Yeah, there's some move order tricks. Let's see if we go into anything interesting. Thanks for the follow. What's your name? Gregoom? So this is the first move order trick. It's important to play knight d2 and not knight f3. If knight f3, there would be queen b6. And it's important to unleash the rook so it doesn't get trapped in certain lines. But in this line, okay, we transpose into some kind of main line. We say hi to chess bay. We say hi to joker teeth and J brand. Um, is there static? Oh no. It could be... Is there interference with my phone? Because it was doing that last time. Throw my phone on the floor. <laughs> Maybe that will help. Um, Bishop e7 is a tricky move. But... Yeah, Bishop e7, he's threatening knight h5. So I'm going to play h3. Chess Bay likes my pick of the giant king. Well, now I need my phone back to show the pick, unless unless people just want to look at my Instagram. <laughs> yeah, I was just taking a walk yesterday, and it was like right before sunset, or during sunset, and the light was great, and there was a giant chess piece um, just sitting there. Chess Bay with the link. Always delivering. It is slightly modified in in, uh, in Lightroom, though. I had to boost up the the contrast and the dynamic range. Um, but yeah, it's been been a while before that since I posted on Instagram. 
but probably the next like several days i'll be posting more because there's about to be a boatload of super gms coming to st louis and i'll be taking pictures of them most likely okay so let's just castle and now i just want to do london stuff improve the knights maybe go for f4 at some point it's always a question what do i take with i'll take with pawn i enjoy having a pawn on e5 i'm expecting knight d7 and then i can provoke g6 Black plays rook e8. This is very, very typical London stuff. And it usually takes some effort to win these positions. Actually, one difference here, I can't I don't have access to h3, which is useful in some other lines. Magisto, thanks for following. I did not play Title Tuesday. I, I forgot it was the first Tuesday of the month. Um next time I have to plan ahead. Except the next several months I'll be teaching on Tuesday, so I don't know when my next title Tuesday is going to be. I really don't want to do this, but I'm going for queen h6, he's going to play rook e8, then I play bishop h2, bishop f8, <sighs> queen f4, bishop g7, knight f3. It's a little ugly, but I guess it's possible. Peter Svidler, I am streaming for the next three days. At least I, I finally got around to making a schedule. Um, oh, thanks, Chespe. I just saw your comment. Uh, I do appreciate that. <laughs> um, but I do have a schedule. It's updated. Um, there's going to be a stream tomorrow and the next day and the next day after that. Um, so I might just end up planning just like a few days ahead. Uh, rather than trying to map a full week out, because that's sometimes difficult. I'm streaming late because my, my workday ended at, at 9 p.m. and I had to get food. I had to calm down. I had some stress for relief tea. Got a new brand of tea at Whole Foods, which has relieved the stress, at least temporarily. But this is <laughs> playing chess and streaming is one way to get the stress back. Am I taking part in the Rapid Shield? I should look up the Lee Chess tournament calendar because I'm not sure. Yeah, I might be. I might be missing like some important tournaments or something. Um, I'm not sponsored by anything yet. If I'm promoting a product, it's because I truly like the product and not because of, of a sponsorship if at some point i do get sponsored i will probably have a disclaimer what kind of tea it's literally called like stress relief tea but i forget it was from whole foods you can get it on, on amazon anything they sell in whole foods i think you can get on amazon Except like the fresh stuff. Not entirely sure. I think there is lavender in it. It was like honey lavender stress relief. But it's long gone. At least for now. <laughs> sponsored by the St. Louis Chess Club. This stream is not sponsored by uh by anything except for me, and by whoever cheers, I guess. Uh, Jack Z. Jack Z, were you the one sharing the Dvoretsky links? I think, yeah, I, I, at some point I clicked on one of the links and you, like one of the end game positions was really interesting. I do appreciate you sharing links. Um, sometimes they're hard to click on during stream though. Okay, let's go for Rook D1. There's a 9 a.m. tournament? I don't know if I can wake up that early. Would have to fall asleep now. 
and get about nine hours of sleep. Knight g5, okay, let me think. Knight g5 is a bad move. I have to keep this defended. Let's play queen d4. This is potentially going to be a very long grind. I think the long-term plan is to somehow get a pawn to f4, king to h1, rook to g1, and someday play g4. Black clearly wants to expand on the queen side. Play knight e1. Mr. Tamfam, thanks for the follow. Okay, I'm going to try and focus on the game because it's uh, it's about to be a time scramble, at least for my opponent. Maybe not for me. Play the grab, thanks for the follow. Do I trade queens? Probably not. Because I would want the knight to come to d4, the king to come to h1, and I'll just continue with... Let's start with knight f3. It still takes a while for black to break through on the, the queen side. But he is trying. Let's start with knight e4, attacking the pawn. Queen e7, or rook e7, or rook e8 will be played, or none of those moves. It's another free pawn. Hang my sack. Thanks for the follow. Interesting name. Let's go back. Always nice being up a pawn and just having full control. This is a nice clump of pawns. Now there is increment. There's a three second increment. So I can't go for any like dirty flags. I actually have to convert. Uh, when the time is right, I would like to play f5 or just fork him or her. <laughs> Win material. This should provoke resignation. Take. Maybe not. Let's play. I'm somewhat conflicted. I was about to play knight f3, which is probably a fine move. I'm going to keep my knight there. I'll play queen g2. And the problem is this bishop can't really activate itself. Can I trap the queen? Can I do this? And then this? Let's try that. A pawn is attacked. Let's do this. Just want to keep control. Now the plan is rook. I wanted to play this and this. Okay, we'll go for a queen trade. And just be up a piece, be up more material. Put the rook back on d1. A full rook now. I was about to take here, and then there's d3 check. That wouldn't be losing. That was close to losing, though. Um... I pre-move that for a split second there. I'll pre-move this. That's a safe pre-move. I was about to pre-move rook c7. It's always nice in these optic color bishop positions. You can just pre-move a bunch of things. That's the question here is how do I win this? Put the bishop on b4, and then maneuver the rook, or not. Yeah, let's put the rook on f4. And <laughs> bishop c3 just to be extra safe. Taking a long time. Okay, free pawn. I could pull a Ben Feingold and make 
what, like seven bishops? Would people enjoy that? Okay, let's just push pawns. The first... The first goal. Okay, I win. Connect four. Make seven knights. I saw some absurd picture that Ben Feingold posted on Facebook of like all the pieces and even more like extra pieces clumped together and then there was just like king and rook mate. It was really bizarre. Problem is I can't like multi pre-move. I could get all my pieces back and set them up on the first rank. I'm not going to do that, because my opponent resigned. I wouldn't do that anyway. I, I was going to make a queen, um, I think. I don't know. Anyway, good game, ZL123. What was there to learn in that game? Oh yeah, the London is a good opening. I want to show one trick. Do I want to show one trick? This is a secret trick. Which I, I don't think I've ever had before. But with this specific move order, if black plays a media queen b6, uh, there's a trick where white plays queen b3, c4, queen c2. And this would be a very similar line to that variation with knight f6 and knight f3 included, where black would have bishop f5, and that would be a good line for black. But in this specific position, there is a trap where if Black plays bishop to f5. I believe white can just take it with the idea that after queen take b2, queen take d5, this is just better for white. Because queen c1 doesn't do anything, queen take a1, there's a very strong move, queen b5. Um, if anyone wants to explore this line further, you can do so on Lee Chess, or you can. Uh, you can buy my London course, because I went over this line uh, in depth. There is a game uh, where Gelfand lost pretty brutally. Um, but yeah, it's a cool variation. You can trap some pretty strong players with it. So, let's move on. Oh, my phone's on the floor now. Because I, I wanted it not to mess with the mic. Okay. Give me a random number between 1 and 13. It's 9. 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Paul. Good luck, Paul. How to defend against London? Well, if my opponent plays a London, then we'll find out. But is Paul around? Paul, where are you? Oh, here's Paul. Okay. Um, let's play d5 again. I want to play the opening that I wanted to play last time. Um, hopefully he'll play more normally. Okay, this is very playable for white. I wanted to play the Cambridge Springs, but yeah, people do this these days. Play c6. Now we have a QGD exchange variation. Uh, he's not playing the London, unfortunately. Let's play bishop f5. We'll go into this line. This is a very well-known line where we trade queens. Black gets awkward pawn structure, but I also get the bishop pair. And I enjoy playing this line for a win because it has some very interesting positional elements. Uh, I'll start with knight d7. There's a lot of like queenside, like, queenside play ideas for black involving knight b6, knight c4, a5, a4. We'll see how he handles it. Did Nisi Piano play this recently? I don't know. I've, I have not been following as much top-level chess as I should be. 
Uh, it's possible though. I'm gonna throw in bishop e4 check. I'll pre move knight b6. There is a, a really well known, really notable game um, within the last couple of years between Carlson and Kramnik in this line. And Carlson had some great preparation and just uh, just crushed Kramnik. Um, but. I'm still happy to play this line because most people don't have amazing preparation like Carlson. Am I a fan of the Slav? I'm not a huge fan of the Slav. I like the semi-Slav because there's more dynamic play. I just don't like the Slav because exchange Slav kind of scares me. Let's move the bishop back to e7. I was about to play bishop d6, but... In many cases, a knight maneuvers to d6 via one of these squares. Like if he plays b3, then knight c8 is a very common move. So if he plays b3 here, I would probably play a5 first. What year did I graduate from Niles North? 2012. Um, that was a long time ago. Those good old days. And yeah, that's true. I can reach a Cambridge Springs from a semi-slav. Thanks for the, the follow, whatever your name is. And question is, do I play a4 or do I start with this? a4, b4. I could play knight c4 there. We trade stuff. I could throw in h5. He would play h4. I don't know, I'm conflicted. I just want to see what he does next move. I'm going to play king d7. It's just kind of a waiting move. Slow improving moves. A slow improving move. Okay, he wants to play that f5, that's logical. I'll go for this maneuver. Am I still using the blue yeti? Oh, yeah, the background noise is probably the fan of my computer. Um, give me one moment. Let me, let me see how bad this sounds. Sounds. Mm. And then I stopped talking, so there's no sound. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, for future streams, I'll use the Blue Yeti. I left it at the chess club. I don't think it's too bad. I, I did a test recording. Um, I'm using the Samsung Go mic, which is this thing. And I have a, a very small mic stand, which is just a bottle of jelly. H5 is an interesting move. Can I play H5 myself? That's playable. Just trying to deflect the bishop. I could rook lift. I should lift more. Let's rook lift. Rook b6. Wait, there's no increment in this game. I should play quicker. Good thing I have a time advantage. Move the knight back, there's a pin. Put the rook on the open file, or half open file. Like we barely got through like some middle game, and now he's about to flag. I'm also about to flag. Let's leave the pawn tension. So one thing, when white plays e4 in these positions, the two bishops become happier, usually. Move the rook back. Move the bishop back. Ooh. Build up pressure. Take the bishop. And trade everything. Okay. I'm sorry to my opponent. <laughs> Felt like a... I don't know. It was one of these like positional middle games and he just took too long, I guess. 
How much have I spent on chess sets? Which one is my favorite? I'm going to give you a very disappointing answer. I don't know what chess sets I own. I don't know if I even own a chess set. There might be something... I'm pretty sure I, I could like put together like a board in pieces, but I have not put much money into chess sets because I play mostly online. I study using the computer. Has anyone read the Art of Learning by Waitskin? Um, I recommend, like, I, I like to recommend that book. Uh, that's a great book, just in terms of the learning process, because it applies to so many things beyond chess. Um, yeah, I haven't, I actually haven't read the full book, but I've read, like, the chess parts of it, and I can, uh, can definitely vouch for it. Okay, where is my phone? Where's Siri? Give me a random number between 1 and 13. The answer is 9. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Clopa. Good luck, Clopa. Is Clopa here? D4. Okay, I'm going to try and play the same opening. I want a Cambridge Springs. Oh, but we have a London. Okay. I'll play... Um, I'll play the line that I've been playing recently against the London. Or should I go for the other line? Let's go for this line first. Depending what he plays. Yeah, he's gonna, if I play knight c6, he's gonna play knight d2. So what I'm gonna do is play e6 here. And then I will play bishop d6. This is probably the simplest line I can recommend against the London. Uh, move order is very important, so pay, play, pay close attention. Uh, after queen c7, I haven't played knight c6. If the knight were on c6, he could win a pawn with d takes c5. So I keep everything defended, and now I'll play knight bd7. And the idea is it's almost impossible for white to stop e5. So he takes, I could take with knight. This is already very comfortable for black, because I have more center pawns. e5 might still come. Knight e4 might be coming. Do I play on chess.com? I was playing on chess.com uh, like an hour ago, trying to get my bullet rating up. And I'm probably going to start playing uh, these Arena Kings tournaments. And I think the next season is next month. So... I'll look to play that. Because the sites have like their advantages and disadvantages. Um, I mean, clearly I've been, I've been more into Lee Chess, at least recently. Um, just because their tools, I think, are, are easier to use. And the study feature is amazing. I don't think Chess.com has anything comparable to the study feature. Unless I'm mistaken. But the ability to save collections of games and to collaborate with other users, it just, it's amazing for teaching, it's amazing for self-study. And there's been, um, at least for me, I found less bugs with, uh, with Lee Chess. Um, but on the other side, like the, the community on chess.com is great. There's so many um, like GMs always online. Uh, and they have, cash tournaments on a regular basis so i'm glad that both platforms exist because then like the so-called competition just encourages both platforms to bring more value to the users and i'm i'm grateful for that anyway knight c5 let's go for e5 very soon i did not watch napoverse I probably should have. This week is busy for me, so it's hard to like find time to watch stuff, especially live. Uh, let's castle. B5. So I would like to play this, but then knight here. So maybe I can play g6. 
G6 looks weird, but let's do it. Is E5, E4, even just E5, and like Bishop E6. Now there is two second increment, so there will be no dirty flagging. Upendi, I did see the Carlsen Knight A3 game. I have, I did a stream like going over that game where I had not seen the game until I played through it on stream. So uh, forever, for anyone who watched that, you would see my, um, my candid reaction. And it's on YouTube. I think I posted it on YouTube. Do I prefer two knights or two bishops? Two bishops, of course. Unless it's bullet or bug house, then definitely two knights. In this case, we both have two knights and one bishop, but I have two center pawns. I'll play bishop and bishop b7. I was considering bishop e6, but I want my rooks in the center, unobstructed. Favorite chess player? That's a tough question. Because there's many different factors to judge chess players on. In terms of style, uh, either Karpov or Michael Adams. But um, I don't know, it's, it's hard to gauge. In terms of creativity, probably like Joe Bava or Richard Rapport. He's about to flag. Unless he can start averaging like two seconds per move. Um, this is such a nice position though. Let's go for this. H4. I'll ignore him. I just want to double on one of these files. Probably the C file. Attack the pawn. Go for this. Uh, let's go for this. I think there's some plan of king g7, rook h8. Wait, what does bishop take g6? This desperation. Okay, king g7. Ooh, more material for me. Okay, good game, Klopa. Um, hello, hello to more people. Or wait, no, people are just saying hi to each other. Hello, Dirt Lavert. You did not miss too much. You did miss this nice game. This anti-London variation. Um, I think this is the simplest thing to play. I do recommend, though, if they play like some early... There's another line I like to recommend, where you play knight c6, knight f3, and then queen b6. The problem with that line is after knight c6, knight d2, it can lead to other sorts of positions. Um, but in this line... I think just black just equalizes. Now, I will say, I've, I've studied this from the white side a few days ago. I found a, a counter response, but I'm not going to show it now because I might make a YouTube video about it. Um, but there's something very specific white can do to, uh, to deal with this if you are a London player. Um, when a player gets to my level, hardcore theory, what's your way to get better? There's very small differences separating uh, like my level from like next level. Um, a lot of it is consistency and just being sharp and maintaining your like your health and your stamina during tournaments. Of course, everyone's different, um, but yeah, opening theory plays a, a much larger role, especially. Like players my level, the tournaments we play in, or playing other strong players whose games we have access to before we play them. Uh, so most tournaments I play, I'll, I'll look up all my opponents 
uh, before I play them and then study their games, study their tendencies, and try and find their the holes in their opening repertoire. Do I listen to classic rock? Yada yada. Wait, I don't think that question is directed at me. Um, I, I usually don't keep my opening novelties a secret. Um, I just want the best medium of sharing them with the world, which is not right now. Okay, random number time. Give me a random number between 1 and 11. Give me a random number between 1 and 11. It's 5. Five. What are the holes in my repertoire? What are the holes in my repertoire? Here's what I found on the web for what are the holes in my repertoire. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. M, F, okay. Good luck. I could play a London. Let's just play E4. Let's be aggressive. Yeah, the, <laughs> playing the London as a whole. I mean, my repertoire is weird because I usually adapt... Like I'm capable of playing d4, e4, c4, and knight f3 on move 1. I like to adapt to what my opponents play. So I don't have like the typical repertoire that most players have. Um, but there are some holes which I'm not going to get into right away. Uh, I like the fact that he's thinking here. If I had to like rank my favorite openings... London would be number one. This would be number two. I love this opening. It's just laced with traps and landmines. And he's already like terrified. A6. A6 is a move. I actually like to play A6 as black when I play Sicilian. Because it usually discourages bishop C4 and then the bishop now should develop to G2. And this is going to be more of a closed Sicilian. Unless there are some cases where I play bishop g2, knight e2, and d4. And I transpose into some strange open Sicilian. So he's just thinking. What is he thinking about? There's no increments. It is complicated. Move three. All the pieces still on the board. Hello, Manas. Good to see you back. Manas, I have another Twitch question. Maybe you can help. Um, how do I become verified on Twitch? I just want like the check mark thing. Is there a, a simple process? G6. G6. Let's play H4. I had a tournament game recently where my opponent played g6 on move 2. And we had the same position, but without a6, my opponent played bishop to g7. This position, I'm curious, can I play d4? No, let's just stick with bishop g2. Wait, you see it? Am I already verified? Oh, I'm verified. I didn't even know that. Wow. Okay. I wonder when I got verified. I don't even remember going through like the verification process. Um, hmm. Well, I guess the next step is becoming verified on what are these other platforms like Twitter, Instagram. That might be more difficult. Game with Priya Darshan. Priya Darshan, the GM. Are you referring to Manas? Who are you referring to? Because I have a good friend who's a GM. His name is Priya Darshan. Um, is he challenging me? 
Let's see Pure Darshan here. Uh, let's continue developing. Did I play knight e2? Ah, I should have played knight. Knight h3 was such a better move. Now my knight is misplaced. Maybe I'll go for this. I just want my knight on h3. Or it's just a more effective piece, because sometimes g5 is weak. Um, Manas, I will not let you know when we can play. Siri will let me know when we can play. Because <laughs> that's, uh, that's a system for this stream. Um, d6. Let's play a4. If you want to give me a shout out on Twitter, I don't know what was the, what was the context. Oh, you have 5,000 followers? Wow. I just broke like 1,000 not too long ago. Okay, so now the knight's on h3. And there's some idea here of playing very slowly. I might put the bishop on g5, queen on d2. And the slow play involves knight d1, c3, knight e3. Start with bishop g5. He never wants to play f6. I might just want to play knight d5. Put the pressure. Um... Yeah, using Siri is not an excuse. That's what I've been doing for the last, for this stream and for many other streams. So. That's going to be the system. At some point I might change the system, but I'm not sure. That was weird. <laughs> it just shows the game, but from his perspective. That's interesting. Yeah, the thing about these positions, at least for the black side, it's not always clear what to do. So the fact I provoked h5, he doesn't really want to castle. If he does castle, I have ideas of f4, f5, which I'm going for. I kind of forgot he could play f6 now, but I guess I'll have to deal with it. Because then the knight can come into e6. This should be okay. This is a little bit reckless. But I have a time advantage. Have some... Sorry about that. The mic fell off. It's a very tiny stand. Yeah, I have a time advantage and I have initiative. And I have an e6 outpost, which he might sacrifice a rook for. But then my queen will come in. Yeah, I have to play bishop h3, support the pawn. Then maybe I'll go for rook f7 and queen h6 and rook f1. He wants to take the pawn. So let's start with the queen. Okay, queen g5. Don't know if that effectively works. I could play knight e2, threatening c3, and then I have knight f4. Yeah, let's put the knight on f4. Maybe I start with this. Or maybe I don't. So what am I down? I'm down a piece. No, I'm down... Okay, I have a, a rook for two miners. I have a rook and pawn. I've not lost a pawn yet. That's good. Now let's play c3. I want to play d4, d5. He 
And just reinforce the e6 pawn. This is nice pawn structure. Still haven't lost a pawn. His pieces can't really do t much to me. Now I can start winning pawns. White is now better. Let's avoid any trade. I want to win this game without losing a pawn. I'm so close. Don't take my b2 pawn. Please don't. Does he want more time? I could give him more time. <laughs> I gave him more time. Um, yeah, because I want to win this game in fashion. Not going to give him too much more time. And now, yeah, the knight's coming to f6. I'll take the pawn. And then retreat. Let's play b3. Give him more time. <laughs> Um, I just like this position so much, I don't want him to flag. Let's have the triple battery. Put the king on g2 first. Bring the knight here. Yeah, I'll bring the knight to g5. I have to be careful about my own time. And this is rated too. <laughs> How do I win this? Maybe rook h1 first. <laughs> I think that was the last more time I'm giving him. Unless he wants more time. Queen h5. Okay, we could trade. And then... Wait, I want him to win g3 though. So maybe I'll take and play g4. And then king f3. What is this position? I could go into f7, and then maybe this. What is he doing? I can attack the knight. Knight is very close to trapped. Take his bishop too. Let's do this. He wants a draw. No, I don't want a draw. Let's play... Move the rook here. Wait a minute. Where should I move the rook? Let's move the rook here. Oh, he flagged, because I forgot to give him more time. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, what's the valuation of this position? Knight take e5 was an easy win. In, this, in what position? In this position? Or in this position? Also, who's Priyadarshan? 
I don't quite understand. Um, just for fun, let's discuss the stockfish evaluation. If black can win b3, it's not so clear. If I can break through on the king side. Actually, don't know. Okay, I'm guessing like plus one uh, after rook h2. Let's just check. Plus one. Ooh, plus two, plus three. Because knight d3. Oh, I just have rook h1 preventing knight c1. This should be two. H5 I like. Take, take, knight c1. Yeah, I think I can play h6 and then somehow break through. Also, my computer's lagging, so let's avoid using Stockfish. Um. Okay, Siri. Give me a random number between 1 and 14. Give me a random number between 1 and 14. That would be 9. It's always 9. What is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oops! I accepted a challenge that I didn't mean to accept. <laughs> I'm playing Food Wine. Good luck, Food Wine. Um, I'm sorry for whoever 9 was. Is Food Wine even here? I don't think Food Wine is here. We'll give it five more. Yeah, okay. We're playing a game. Food Wine is playing quickly. Playing a two knights attack. This is a five plus ten. Has Food Wine played like any games at all? Or is this the first game ever played? Played three games. Okay. Currently thinking. I was too late to abort, unfortunately. This is one of my favorite variations against the French. The so-called two knights attack. Brawl Orion is back. Hello, Brawl Orion. And this variation especially with the pawn on d4. Now there's a trap. I can't play d3 because queen a5 check. I can take and then play d3. And then I can castle. Yeah, there's probably some theory. Pretty sure, yeah, c3 is the main line after c5. But this is just easy to play in blitz. It's castle, e3. Yeah. Because his pawns are just so weak. And I think there's some idea like a4, bishop a3. Maybe I'll bring my knight to c4. I think knight e5. Maybe I could have played that right away. And like f4. Yeah, you saw the Von Wele game. That was such a painful game. But he's so good at chess. Such a strong positional player. I played him twice in the same summer. Both at uh, these tournaments in the Netherlands. In both games I was black. He's so solid as white. Okay, well this is nice. I'm attacking c6. I'm unleashing both my queen and my f-pawn. I kind of just want to be aggressive. Not sure what the plan is with queen h5. 
just hoping something falls into place. Probably something involving F4. Is it hard to go back and forth from online view to actual board? When I was younger, that was probably more of an issue. But now it's there's no difference. Chess position is a chess position. Um, but that's an interesting question. I think some newer players, like sometimes it's hard to go from one to the other. Knight back to e8. He wants a draw. I don't want a draw. I want a pawn storm. Okay, I think the plan is to improve, improve, or maybe unimprove. I just want to put like all the pieces on the king side and get something. Someday I'll go for f5. There is something to be said, like over the board chess, there's like more, there's more pressure. Sometimes online chess, when you're just clicking away, it's so, it's so much easier to get careless. Okay, he's doing something with his knight. Let's play rook f2. He's going to play knight b4. I'll probably retreat with the bishop. This increment could make this game go long. So I'll probably have to like come up with something productive. Like maybe knight h5 at some point. Knight h5 and g4 and rook g2. This is one option. Looks attractive. The thing is, if I play knight h5, he has g6. But then maybe I just go back. And there's some weakness. F5 is still always a resource. Even like knight h4 and f5. Again, with this position, it's so hard for black to find anything active. Because there's really no pawn breaks that make sense for black. If he ever plays e5, I play f5. So you could try f5. I play e5. Already getting tired. This guy's username is making me hungry and thirsty. G5! Well, I can't on passant. I could do this, but then he does this and this. So let's go for knight h5. This is going to be a very closed position. It is pretty late in America. Cold player, are you in America? Or you're in Canada? I forget. It's after midnight in America. I'm not going to be around for too much longer, at least tonight. But the plan is to play g4, queen g3, h4. Hey, we have an Australian. Thanks for the comment, Crimson Bovine. Cold player is in England. Cold player, are you going to go to the World Championship? It's officially in London, I think. I could make a dirty flag emote, but I think other chess streamers already have dirty flag emotes. I do want to make a London emote, though. I'm going to play g4, give him one night. Fifth and sixth round. I'm in the process of planning my trip. 
I would like to go for the whole event, but I might just go towards the end or something. Okay, I'll put the queen on h6. He is putting up a fight. Yeah, he wants that queen trade. Now h4 is an option here. If I play h4, threatening to take, he would probably take. Not sure how promising that is. I just want my knight to come to h5. To do that, I need to get to g3. To do that, I need to get to f1. Okay, so this is a path, but I need to defend this pawn first. <laughs> I could do this, this, and then this. It takes a long time. I could also do this, maybe, and then do f6. That probably doesn't make any sense, because the f-pawn would be pinned. So what to do? I can do... no, h3 does not seem right. Okay, I'm just going to play bishop a3. The plan is to play rook c1. And then this maneuver. And if he does this, I'll put my queen on h5. It's difficult to draw arrows. I still mess it up. Um, but at least with these lines, I'm getting my practice in. And he's going to be really annoying with his queen. He's going to play this, and I'm going to play this, and he goes back, and I go back. And then it could be a draw. If there was no increment, I could grind this down. There's increment. If I play queen h3, that could be a mistake, because that could allow some future h5. I'm probably going to make a very bad decision here. I don't want to do this, but I'm going to take the knight. I'm going to allow this very closed drawish position, and I'm going to try and grind it out. Because this is casual, there's no rating on the line. I think I should play a5 if I want to play for a win. I'm expecting that he's going to trade queens. It's so expensive. 600 pounds? Oh, for VIP tickets. That's why you have to become friends with either Magnus or Fabiano. Let's play... Oh, he's going to win a pawn. He's going to win a pawn. I can't really stop him. It's not good. I didn't see that far ahead. Maybe I could play h4 though. h4, g4, there, there, there. Doesn't work. Wait a minute. h4, g4, I have rook g2. Let's do it. I'm trying. I think Mama Diarov is still number three in the world, but he's close to number two. 2700 chess. Yeah, Mama Diarov is 2817. Karwan is 2822. So he plays king h6, it's logical, but now I can 
probably hold on. I'm going to take and play rook h2. Wait a minute, or I'm just winning e5. Or am I just mating him somehow? This has to be made somehow. Rook h2. I'll calculate. Rook h2, king g4. King f2, threatening rook h4 mate. So he would take on g5, then I play rook g1 check, king f4, rook g2, h5, and then knight h2, and he can't stop rook g4. One more time. Rook h2, king g4, king f2, threatening rook h4. So the only way for him to get out of it is to take. Then I play rook g1. King f4. Then I play rook g2, threatening rook g4 mate. He would play h5. Then I play knight h2. I guess he has rook take f5 there. But no, rook take f5, I still made him on g4. I think this works. King g4 is the only legal move. Now, it's all going to come to life. There's no other move than f take g5. I wonder if there's any other... Maybe there's some simpler win. But this is pretty nice. <laughs> this king... This king is having major regrets. It's h5, knight h2. Rook g4 is on the way. I could probably free move rook g4. That was nice. I wasn't expecting to mate him so quickly. I was expecting a really long grind. This king was just overly active. Knight h2. Nice finish. Yeah, rook f5. GG. Uh, what did he do wrong? Yeah, he walked his king. He walked his king to f4. Maybe he was overly ambitious to take the pawn. Anyway, that was a nice calculation. Okay. Uh, do I end it there and sleep happily? Or do I accept another challenge? Hmm. I think I'm going to end it there. It's been a good day. Good finish. Anyone else streaming? Hey, Manas is streaming. Good raid, Manas. Watch streamers. I always have trouble spelling his name. Okay, good night, everyone. Uh, feel free, feel free to raid Manas, or at least join the raid. And good night.